dour despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck do the rest of you get by? I do it by asking questions, and I have some for you. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. A strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. Do you have an alibi for when Lolly was shot? Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. They did say you left to take a really long leak, 15 minutes. Yeah, and I'm sure they also made some funny remarks about it. They always do. I've driven a lot of long haul and chugged a lot of beer, man. <sighs> Can't do either without some power of mind over bladder. And anyway, that wouldn't have been enough time. Our investigation, Wince from the Pain, has shown that 15 minutes was just enough time to commit the murder. Wow. Now I'm curious. Please, explain. Play pinball much? No. Not since I was 14 and hanging out in the only diner in Dardun. Haven't been into low-risk, no-reward games since moving to the city. Why? Never mind the pinball then. There's a secret way from the whirling bar to the roof. Don't know it, but also... She frowns, studying your face. The shot couldn't have come from the roof. Or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. No one mentioned. The pain stops him from finishing the sentence. That didn't go super well. You've got to lay something better on her. Would you say that Lully was a likable person? I didn't like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. Did you feel protective of the Union? Yeah, sure. And I didn't like Wild Pines sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fuck ton of other people around here. She didn't hate him, okay? You don't feel sympathy for mercs? It's hard work. Plenty of broken people who don't come with that kind of body count. Besides, they're paid well for what they do. Other questions? I'm listening. You have a gun. And? Do you collect guns? Maybe rifles? No, they're not practical. Break too often. I can't quite tell what kind of gun it is. A Nachtway 80 front loader. Two barreled. Not really what you were looking for, I'm guessing. That isn't it. I see it's a front loader. Do you have another gun somewhere? Sure don't. The breech loader? No. This is such a wipeout. There's other evidence I want to ask you about? Yeah, evidence. Do you like to hang out on rooftops? Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Claudia's rooftop. Sure, I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. What's so great about her antenna? It's very powerful. I used it to tune into RCM frequencies. That's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. Is that the only reason you hung out on the roof? The view's pretty bomb, too. But you might say the antenna was the main attraction there, yeah along with Plaza. So you're sure you didn't shoot the Merc from the roof? Yes, I'm sure. And anyway, as I said before, the shot had to have come from afar. Did you leave any flowers for Costly on the roof? No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. There weren't just flowers. They're symbols of revolution. Push through the pain. So now I'm leaving revolutionary symbols around? Come on. The class here was mourning. I never did understand why, when someone dies, a hothouse's worth of flowers has to die too. Good boy. Okay, so you didn't leave any Maybells. No, I did not. Hey, I gained XP. You're running drugs for the Union. I've been through your lorry. So, part of gold Tommy fucked me over too. Never trust a musician. That really comes as a blow to her. Uh... I think it's better to make her hurt. Yeah, I made him talk. Yeah, that figures. What now? You're going to arrest me for drug trafficking? You had a financial incentive to kill the Merc? 
plan. It's to get away from all that murderous shit that I left Jamrock, my previous employer, for the Union. Yeah, dude. The lieutenant is unable to articulate his question. She deliberately avoided naming the mob she worked for. You might be able to find this out later. I got lucky being a dispatcher. Never had to do any of the really dirty work myself. This gun has only been used for self-defense against serious scum. She turns the knob down a millimeter. There. It's going to be easier to reach the machine now. But you're threatening us with it. Based on what I've heard about you, you are serious scum. All right, all right, all right. Let's take a step back. Yeah? Where? More. More questions before doing anything. How did you know we were coming? I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. By hiding bullets on the floorboards? So you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. Preparing for the worst? I was. Before I caught you in the pale latitude compressor. I'm fine now. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. Who killed the Merc if it wasn't you? How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him. And there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes. Her tired voice. She's been staying up late, listening in on the conversations crisscrossing Martinez. Police radio? You've been following the case? Who hasn't? You know, I can still see him there, in Claus's room, lying on his side. He was still warm, but the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a good long while. What happened Sunday night? Tell me your version. She eyes you, warily, as though gauging your sincerity. It's okay. We just want to... Ah! Uh, uh. <laughs> we just want to... Oh! He struggles to finish the sentence. All right, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers, like always. Then Klasia comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves. So I grab a seat next to her. Klasia said you knew something was wrong immediately. No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be a first for her. But no such luck. She was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so yeah. You made it look like he'd been hanged. It's pretty weird that you came up with the plan right on the spot. What? No. Faking a lynching was her idea. Her idea? Yeah, in cold blood. It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to get the hardy boys. Huh. So, assuming Klausia was the mastermind behind all this, but they did point out no one heard a gunshot in the building. So Klausia didn't shoot him upstairs. So she has an accomplice that shot him from farther away. Or she shot him, like he was in her room, she was far away and shot him. Then came back and went up to her room and then pretended to come down and say that he was just shot. But then he would be colder and the lady said that he was still warm. Unless she had him, like, I don't know, leaning against a heater or something. I, I'm not sure. That's bad that she'd be so calm. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. Do you think she killed Lily herself? As I keep telling you cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. But even if this is true, weren't you worried that means you might lead to... War? The thought crossed my mind. But the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way. Although the way things are going... Eh, fuck it. I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. Her grip on the gun is tight. Her arms turned. 
The posture's solid. Martinez lost the value. If you didn't kill him, why hide? I saw you roll into town. I wasn't about to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. What do you mean, La Puta Madre agent? Yes, you. Everyone says you're his peon, his human can opener. Through the sudden sharp pain in your head, you hear the lieutenant mumble something to himself. Fucking hell. And why me? You hear through the white noise. It's especially bad suddenly. Felt like a vein exploded. Who's everyone? How do you know this? Everyone in Jamrock. The cops? The criminals? Why do you think I'm holed up in here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? If she knows that about you, she must know your real name too. Tell me, what's my name? If you know that about me, you must know my name. Harry Dubois. One corrupt motherfucker with the disco pants and a funny tie. Agent to la puta madre. So she knows your name? That doesn't mean you're on the tape. Criminals make up bogeyman stories about cops all the time. La puta madre? I've heard of la puta madre. He's dangerous, right? Is that a joke or a threat? I'm guessing both. No, that was a real question. Yeah, sure. She doesn't believe you. I'm sure La Puta Madre himself will explain it all to you soon enough. What did you do to this Madre anyway? You've been to my lorry. You think the biggest player in Jamrock appreciates competition? And now I have Harry Can Opener in my lair. Fucking Titus. Hearing Mark say that is funny. Oh god. I don't know what that translates to. She's not going to change her mind that easily. She still perceives you as a threat. Wait, one thing. Possibly small, but she said you rolled into town. Was that you singular or plural? She might know something. 97%. Destroy the machine! Dude, wait, she's got a gun. I thought I would charge and tackle the thing, but we're just gonna crawl toward it so slow. She could literally just, like, kick me in the nuts. You did it. The compressor lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. Oh my god, my ears are gonna pop. It still hurts like hell, but... Hold on a second. <sighs> Translate. Oh, it's Mother Effer? <laughs> It's Spanish for Mother Effort. Great. Awesome. PG stream, by the way. Uh, let's see. You did it. The rest of the on the side. All right. Well, even if she didn't do the other stuff, she's under arrest for attacking us. You're under arrest. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. Oh, no. Because I said Tommy betrayed her, there's a minus one to convincing her to not kill herself. Whoops, that backfired. What are you doing? Problem solving. Ma'am, put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are... Oh, yes, it is. Oh, God. Ah, uh, rhetoric. Forty two percent. She's truly oh. desperate. She thinks she has no other options. You need to give her options. What options? You know.
Please, put your hands up. Just walk away. She stares at you, frozen, the gun still in her mouth, eyes filled with dark intensity. Then something shifts in her. Gratitude. Doubt. She's still ready to go. You don't have to do this. You're not cornered. I'm letting you go. Day of miracles. I'll take it. She says, pulling the gun out of her mouth, eyes still fixed on you. Then she turns her gaze to the tunnel behind you. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant, and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. Good call. Thanks. Rub, my, rub your temples. I would have done the same had I not been incapacitated. I think she didn't do it. Her tent. We should check it out. He points to the back of the cavern. Okay, that was, that was a spicy interaction, wasn't it? Oh, she goes, it goes up to the water. Dark water trails into the distance. There's no way out. So it's like a cave. Drowamine, plus three health. Cooking utensils, she has prepared herself porridge with bananas. Eight dollars, oh boy. The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. Look inside. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Shine your flashlight on the books. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. See anything? The lieutenant peeks in over your shoulder. Sift through the magazines. Rager Monthly. Journal of Material Science. More technological digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. A notebook? Take it. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. Like a run now. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. Examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name. Schneller. Schneller is a stationary brand from Gottwald, beloved among architects and engineers. Unwind the strap. The journal falls open. About two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. Study the handwriting. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently, perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out, with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. Flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. What kind of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor. Sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. Staff issues, always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. How far back do the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. What did she write the day Lily died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th though, well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this, loyal to a fault. Except, 
But that's another matter entirely. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. <laughs> Anything about Spanish words? That name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your journal? You do see an M though. La Puta Madre? M is mentioned on March 9th and March 15th. Read the entry from March 9th first. Great. M's peon is coming to town. No doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head while I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? Were you supposed to find her, even apart from the investigation then? On M's request? No, you wouldn't do something like this. This must be a mistake. Am I sure this is a mistake? Look at me. Whatever you may look like, you don't feel like a hired assassin. Read the entry from March 12th. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave, or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people, the boys, for example. But experience tells me, did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people. They'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. What is the most recent entry? The most recent entry is from today. It reads... Hold on, chat. This is incredibly rare. You are all very blessed right now. This is like a once a month phenomenon. Just soak it in. Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run, not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. It looks like she might have been... framed? The lieutenant taps on the page. That would be a first, or a fourth. But who's counting, he thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. Kim, am I really a La Mother Effin agent? Ah, uh, no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. If she didn't do it, maybe it's good that we didn't catch her? I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than with us. Especially if she has problems with the Madre. Then who do you think killed the Merc? Could have been Titus. Then again... But no one heard the shot. Maybe there's a hardy boy we've yet to meet who acted as his accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on him. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling and rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. Okay. Looks like we've got that bug again where the camera is not centered. After I load out of this cave, if the camera's still not centered, I'll save it and reload it. Oh, there, oh, that, okay, there we go. Apparently zooming in and out will fix it. Oh, I guess I should put my gun away. I'm reminded of Neverwinter Nights, the old RPG, where if you tried to talk to some NPCs while your weapon was in your hand, they would recoil in horror because you had your weapon in your hand. <laughs> to have my character sleep. It's after midnight. Um, why is the fast travel not coming up? Okay, that's annoying. Oh, 
Why is that showing up? The door is closed for today. Time to put the kids to sleep. Yeah. All right, let's see. I'm okay. afraid we don't have time for rest stops right now, officer. We should really get back to the whirling. It's after midnight. Titus and them isn't there. Okay. I guess because of the, the point of the story we're in, that's why it did that. Crisis. Death. You can feel it in your blue soul. What am I supposed to do? Be prepared. Make sure you have your pepper box in your hand. Your fingers reflexively reach for the Villiers 9mm pistol in your pocket. I'm not sure I feel ready for what lies ahead. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. I don't have any bullets for this gun. <laughs> this is just a bluff. Having this in hand is just a bluff. I'm all out of shit to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Oh, it's the mercs in ceramic armor. No helmets, everything important. And then the hardy boys. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up. You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. There's something very wrong with him. He's dangerous. Shh. The lieutenant raises his left hand. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The kept is merciful, willing to We've spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Peaceful. It sounds like the armored figure is weeping. Rude Hohenkloen. Wait, wait, what? Where is this guy? We've seen these two talk. There's a third one somewhere? Nest in your abdominal cavity, like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but... You can hear oh, them. over here. Fuck, there's the third one. How did we miss something like this? The lieutenant points at the helmeted figure. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. He <laughs> yells, stop, this is the police. Walk away for now. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. We're out of time. This is the mercenary tribunal. Stop. This is the police. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. I'm wearing the dead now guy's it's armor. <laughs> time for some justice. I'm sure this guy would love to see me wearing his dead friend's armor right now. Hey, what's up, dude? I think he's calmed down a bit. Big fuck! <laughs> Say nothing. Cross your arms. You. Cortenaire turns his bloodshot eyes to you. You're probably gonna get killed, too. I think I'm gonna kill you. I didn't think I had it in me to kill a cop. To your left. You hear the lieutenant cock his gun. No one is going to kill.